Rumors are just starting to develop, starting to bubble up among the leakers out there that Apple could, theoretically, possibly, be developing an Apple TV dongle type accessory rather than selling just the giant Apple TV box that starts at $180. If you don't get the 4K one, $150. Given the competition that's coming up against the Apple TV, I'm here today to talk about why I think that's kind of a really good idea. Now, if you guys remember my videos in the past, I was not the biggest fan of the Apple TV 4K. It had some problems that I was experiencing, not to mention, even aside from the quality control issues, I just think design-wise, it's a little bit overkill for what the device is primarily used for. They put really good CPUs in there so that you can put games and App Store type titles onto the big screen, but we haven't seen a ton of games really take full advantage of that in unique and different ways. For the most part, it's just take your iPhone, iPad game, blow it up on the TV, and now it looks slightly better than it would on your phone. But for the most part, what people use the Apple TV for is simply watching Netflix, watching Prime Video, watching YouTube, you know, watching content. It's a very casual type device. Now, it is pretty good at that. I think that there's some easy design flaws like making the remote out of glass that I find particularly annoying, especially since it's so dark. When you're in a dark room, it's hard to see the remote because it just blends in with the darkness. If you drop that remote, which is very easy to do because it's very thin, it's very small, behind your couch and it lands on the tile or on a hardwood floor, it can very easily shatter. Why would this remote be made of glass when it doesn't even add something to the device? It doesn't add inductive charging. When it comes to user interface though, I definitely think tvOS is the best. As someone who's now used a Roku device, I've used Chromecast devices, I've messed with Fire TVs before. They don't quite get as fluid or as easy to use as the Apple TV does, but even the Apple sheep can admit, the extra price you're paying for definitely doesn't outweigh that really smooth UI that you get to use before you start watching your content. I'll put up with a clunkier, slower user interface, whether it be Roku or Chromecast, if it means that the device itself only costs like 20 to $50, which now with Amazon in this business, Roku doing great, Chromecast getting more and more affordable, though that is kind of a different device because it doesn't exactly have a remote, you just kind of cast everything from your phone. Regardless, it's still way more affordable, and the fact that the Apple TV, particularly the 4K one, is nearing the price of an Xbox One S means that this, this is kind of overpriced and way out of line when it comes to the competition. The prices here do not match up. What Apple really needs to be competitive in this market is to make a more budget-friendly option, maybe one that doesn't care that much about gaming performance because we're just blowing up iOS apps. Well, I would love it if Apple could make like a dedicated gaming console and put some actual GPU power and CPU power into a TV box and then start working with some bigger developers to start developing games for their platform. While that would be interesting, I'm not here to talk about that today. The Apple TV 4K is kind of halfway between these streaming boxes like the Fire TV, the Fire TV Stick, and the Rokus. On one side here you have all those affordable streaming sticks and boxes, while on the other side here you have gaming consoles that can actually play some AAA titles fairly well, like the PS4 or the Xbox One S, which with Black Friday coming up you can probably find for $200, maybe less. And the Apple TV and the Apple TV 4K kind of rest somewhere in the middle and it's this awkward zone where you're paying either $150 50 to $200 for a TV box that, you know, it plays TV fine, but it's not quite as good as a gaming console would be. Not to mention same price as a 1S, and the 1S can play YouTube, Netflix, everything you want, and also be really good at doing gameplay. And I think Apple really needs to pick a side or make two different products for both of these different genres. The TV dongle, I think, would be a priority. You could make something, I'm not saying it has to be ultra cheap, we are still talking about Apple, but what if the Apple TV stick started at like a hundred dollars or ninety dollars just so that you get your basics done maybe don't even make it 4k i know that there's 4k sticks out there could compete with but i think a lot of people don't have 4k tvs and they'd be okay with paying a little bit more if they got that fluid tvos design that runs very smoothly and runs very elegantly compared to a lot of the competition which feels a little bit more clunky maybe it's just the fact that the remotes are always made of plastic and rubber and they don't feel as premium but i also think if they wanted to save prices they could lower the build quality or maybe Maybe just be smarter about the Apple TV remote rather than making it of glass. Maybe just make it out of a fairly durable plastic.
plastic and make it bright white. Make it a very visible color so that even when all the lights in the room are off, it's still easy to find the remote if you need to change the volume, stop the movie or the show you're watching. Make it out of the same material AirPods are made out of because they're that bright white, fairly durable plastic, and I do definitely think there's room for improvement there. Maybe keep charging it via lightning, but hey, you know, if it's not too expensive, you could throw wireless charging in there if you want to drop your Apple TV remote on a Qi charger and have it charge that way. Though I don't mind that the Apple TV remote charges with lightning because you only have to charge it once every two weeks or so. It has a pretty decent battery life. So either way, I think that Apple's getting completely smoked by all of the competition's incredibly affordable and doable options. The thing is, most people are okay with having a little bit worser of a user interface because you don't use that part of the device very often. You kind of open Netflix, find the title you want, and hit play. That's not a big part of the experience. The main thing you want from all of these different devices is just to play my content and to play it pretty well. That should not be a $150 experience. Well, it is nice that you have tvOS and you have that fluid user interface and everything looks very clean. You have Siri integration, you have the Apple TV app integrated so that you can just say any title and then it will instantly tell you where you can stream that title. And I think if Apple had a slightly more affordable way to reach tvOS and to reach that user interface that's very clean, then Amazon, Roku, Chromecast, they would actually have something to run for their money. Probably that sweet spot being between 90 and $80. And again, it doesn't have to be 4K, it doesn't even have to have Siri built into it. If you need to compromise in a few areas to get the price lower, I think that's okay. But as of right now, the Apple TV, don't recommend really anyone buying that. They work fine, I guess, but there's so much cheaper options out there. Now, this bit of rumor also comes around with the report that Apple is still spending $1 billion on original programming with original content, talk shows, TV shows, and that app is going to be available on Apple TV soon. So Apple's definitely betting big on the future of having original programming, you know, Apple's own Netflix competitor. But I think that market is already incredibly saturated. We have CBS All Access, we got Prime Video, we got Netflix, Disney Plus launching really, really soon. And I think everyone's going to get it because they've got everything over there. Like they've got Star Wars, Marvel, Disney Animation, Pixar. Most of Hollywood will be available on Disney Plus. So it's already going to be very competitive. But the rumors are saying that whatever Apple's TV program is, they might start making it available for everyone. So this will not be an Apple TV exclusive. It'll be available on Roku devices. They'll start launching apps that third parties can use. It'll be on Chromecast. It'll be on Fire TV. It'll be available for everyone. So if your own original programming is not going to be an exclusive to the Apple TV, then that means Apple, you kind of have to make a good reason for people to buy the Apple TV and spend all of that extra cash opposed to just, well, the user interface looks pretty good. So that's why you should spend $150 to $200 on this device. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me know what you guys think of the Apple TV dongle down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.